What is up my band of outlaws and welcome to another Pokemon Premier League match. I know it's been a while since I uploaded one but with everything going on it was just a bit crazy and insane. I was sick like for a few weeks I really wasn't feeling well and then with the whole like me moving and stuff like that it's just been kind of a issue trying to get these battles videos together. Like I'd done the battles but putting the actual videos together but that's changed now it's going to be different. All the rest of the battles will be uploaded, so we'll catch up with the week. I believe we're on week... As of recording this, we are on week 9. This upload is week 6. So, just to give you a quick rundown, this up this week, uh, this video is week 6, in which we face the Newcastle United. Next week, it's us versus uh, the Bayern Munich. Uh, I did not play that match. Someone else had to play that match for me on my behalf. So that'll be the next upload. And then the week 8 match, we faced the Paris Sect Germain. And I played that match, and that was done on Showdown because I was having some internet issues. So you can look forward to all of them coming up. And then week 9 will be uploaded, hopefully around regular time. And then we got week 10 and 11. And then that's it. Season finished. So, yeah. So this week we are facing the Newcastle United. Or not this week, but in week 6, we faced Newcastle United. And as of week six, I was still only had one victory, and Newcastle United were undefeated. They had not been they had not been beaten by anybody. Quick rundown of the Newcastle United team. Uh, where is it? Sam has a Jirachi, a Nido Queen, Togekiss, Jolteon, Tyrantrum, Talonflame, Hariyama, Gorgeist. Lipard and Mega Blastoise and that Gorgeist can be any Gorgeist form so it can be extra large or it can be small so that's kind of a pain in the ass but because Sam's a damn good battler this um, for week six I just kind of decided to go super offense like there was no way I was gonna outplay him so I just went super offense super hard let me get up the bottom screen as well so, first up we brought Mamo Swine, Chill T-Shirt, Choice Scarf with the Earthquake, Ice Shard, Rock Slide and Ice Cool Crash. Choice Scarf to outspeed a, I think it was Potential Scarf Tyrantrum, I'm really trying to think back here. Like I said, this match was done week 6 and it's now week 9. Um, I believe the Choice Scarf was to outspeed Choice Scarf Tyrantrum and to outspeed a, a particular investment for Jirachi, I believe it was. I'm really struggling to remember. But um, yeah. Earthquake, Ice Shard, Rock Slide, Ice Cool Crash. Ice Cool Crash for big damage in case he brought the physically defensive Gorgeist. And just to do good damage on switches in like Talon Flame in case he predicts an Earthquake or something like that. Next up we had Oasis, the Vaporeon, which was Calm Natured, oh, I believe. Mamo Swine was a... Uh... Yeah, Mamo Swine was adamant. Because I didn't need the Jolly Nature. I can't... Again, I can't really remember why. This is literally just me showing you the team, not really for me giving insight way too long ago to remember. But this is Oasis Vaporeon, which was Calm Natured and has Wish, Ice Beam, Protect and Scald. Ice Beam was for incoming Gorgeist to take a Scald. Um, I didn't really have much for Blastoise, but I was just kind of hoping to wall it out by absorbing Scalds and I wasn't sure if he'd bring offensive Blastoise or not. If it wasn't really offensive Blastoise, I could take most hits anyway and just wish protect stall out. So that was kind of funky. And this was also to take on partially the Nido Queen as well. Next up we had Chloe, the Marwile, which was Stealth Rock, Play Rough, Crunch, and Iron Head. This was a impish defensive Marwile, despite the fact that it only has Stealth Rock. Um, Stealth Rock was good against this game because Sam has Talonflame. And anytime you see Talonflame, you want rocks up. And then when you realise he also has Togekiss, it's kind of like, yeah, rocks are good. Plus he has a lot of Pokemon that can be like Focus Sashed. Like I've seen a Focus Sashed Jirachi before, not necessarily from Sam, but Focus Sash in general. Lipard can be Focus Sash as well, because Sucker Punch and Knock Off do a good amount of work to my team. Uh, Play Rough, Crunch and Iron Head were all there for reasons. Play Rough, because it's Stab, done good damage, and I'm pretty sure it... I'm pretty sure with the investments I had, it nearly one hit KO'd a Tyrantrum. And I could take a minus one, any one hit Tyrantrum wanted to give out. Um, crunch for Gorgeist. I was really scared of this Gorgeist, as you can tell. 
an iron head for neutral damage on Jirachi and damage on Tokikiss. Pretty much. Next up we had Tom the Alakazam with Energy Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball and Psychic with the Focus Sash and a Modest Nature with enough speed EVs to outspeed a Jolteon that has just enough speed EVs to outspeed a fully speed invested Choice Cuff Mamoswine. So this was a really complicated preparation on my part for the Alakazam. I remember doing it and just thinking like, ah, too many numbers! I didn't remember. But uh, he has the Energy Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball and Psychic. Just hit shit hard, pretty much. That was Alakazam's job was to come in and hit stuff hard. And the Focus Sash was to hopefully take any one Brave Bird from... Um, Talonflame and just hit back with a Psychic. I really wanted to keep my Focus Sash intact for Talonflame. And then we had Emotion, Choice Banded, Star Raptor, because Star Raptor just hits things hard. Uh, it's a standard Jolly Natured Star Raptor. I, run, I, uh, I ran Facade this week instead of Dazzling Gleam, because when someone has a Gorgeist with Will-O-Wisp, a, a potential... Togekiss with Flamethrower Burns or Thunder Wave and a Jirachi with Body Slam, Paralyze and just general a lot of status conditions coming from Sam's side so Facade kind of made more sense to me over over Double Edge and I feel like anytime someone want, anytime someone sees a Star Raptor you just want to put a status on it or kill it quickly. So Facade just I don't know, just kind of seemed to work this week. And lastly we have Nasty Plot Mew who says we only run defensive Mews around here? Nasty Plot Mew with Vacuum Wave, Roost, and Shadow Ball. No need for Stab, not really. Vacuum Wave for the Tyrantrum in case we're Scarfed. I'm pretty sure a plus two Vacuum Wave done something around 86%. I can't re remember off the top of my head. Um, vacuum Wave also for Lipard. And Shadow Ball was for Jirachi. Didn't really need Stab on it. And it was Modest Nature as well. So that was the team let's head straight over to okay so as we can see this week he decided to bring the Jirachi the Tyrantrum the Talonflame the Gorgeist the Jolteon and the Mega Blastoise so no Togekiss which was great no Lipard which was great and no Hariyama which was great which were like the three main mons I was like these mons are so damn awkward I just don't know what to do for them so, I'm really glad he didn't bring them. So, let's just jump into the battle. Why not? Let's just jump into the battle. Like I said, Sam was undefeated and I just I was just going hyper offense. So, bear that in mind when I'm going through this battle. I'm hyper offense. So, he starts off with Blastoise. I start off with Mammo Swine because I thought he might start off with Jirachi. I have to switch out straight away because I'm not going to one-hit KO Blastoise. And I need this Mammo Swine for stuff and stuff. So, I go into my dedicated wall for it, which was Vaporeon. He Mega Evolves right up. I've got a lot more respect for Mega Blastoise after this season. Sam's used it like a pro. It's got a lot more respect from me. And he predicts the switch and goes for the Toxic. That's a real pain in the ass Because Toxic damage is not something I really want to work around with when I am Wish uh, Vaporeon. So he goes for the Dark Pulse, maybe just try to flinch me out to get some toxic damage. I go for the Scald, really looking for a burn on Blastoise because it has no recovery. And I don't get it! Oh, the burn! That burn, not getting that burn, believe it or not, is very crucial to later on in the match, which I'll touch on later on. But that burn, I really damn needed it. So who withdraws the Blastoise now? I think I just stayed in and fired off another Scald, really wanting that burn. Um, I think he predicted me to go out there into the Mammo Swine. I went for the, no, I went for the Wish that turn. I went for the Wish because I was starting to get low and there was, no, he couldn't kill me with any one hit. So Jolteon's in now. I'm not really sure what Jolteon wants to do. I think I played a little bit of mind games here. Um, I switched out into the Mammo Swine. He might have thought I was predict, he, I think there was some over predictions, over predictions there kind of thing. So he goes out, I, yeah, he used Volt Switch, doesn't affect me and he immediately withdraws. Which made me think he was Specs. He wasn't Specs. He was Expert Belt. But I think he just feared my Scarf. I went for the Icicle Crash in case he predicted me to go for Earthquake and went into Talonflame. Uh, Icicle Crash done okay damage. Not too bad. And that was a crit as well. So once I saw that was a crit, 
pretty much figured out that it, this was very, very defensive Blastoise. Um, go back out into Vaporeon here, hoping he used Scald, but Sam is a lot better than that and just goes for Dark Pulse. I couldn't stay in there anyway because I was Scarfed. If I wasn't Scarfed, I would have just fired off probably an Earthquake, expecting him to expect me to go into Vaporeon, but whatever. So Vaporeon's very low now. So at this point, I think I'm pretty much just ready to let Vaporeon die. No, I go for a Wish. But I don't think I go for Protect. I'm fairly certain I don't go for Protect. Because Protect is super damn obvious. I think I just stay in and go Man Mode. So, Toxic Damage again. Do I stay in and go Man Mode? He withdraws, expecting me to go for Protect. As he goes back out into that Jolteon of his. And I'm fairly certain I just used Scald. No, I did go for Protect. Okay. God, it's so hard to like commentate a battle I'd done like three weeks ago. Right, here is where I made my bold play. Which was, last turn he had Jolteon in, I went into Mamoswine expecting the Volt Switch. This time, I just stayed in as he goes for Hidden Power. Later on revealed that it was Hidden Power Steel for Mamoswine. So that would have probably killed me. I went for Scald. Just nice damage on Jolteon. That play would not work twice. That play would not work twice. So here I think he specs. So I think I can just stay in and do whatever I want. He has to switch here. He has no option. But he goes for Volt Switch. So, you know, what do I know? Nothing apparently. But Vaporeon goes down there. It done stuff. It got damage. I wish it got the burn on Blastoise. But now I get some initiative, which suits my hyper offense style of play to this week. So he goes into Talonflame, I go out into Marwile, which walls the shit out of Talonflame, even if it goes for Flare Blitz, I could kill it with Iron Head or Crunch. I predict him to switch though, knowing he can't kill me in any one hit, as he goes out into Blastoise. I really should have just clicked Play Rough or something here, but instead I went for Stealth Rocks, uh, totally forgetting that Blastoise gets Rapid Spin. Here I should have, I should have, I really should have just gone for Play Rough on that turn. Just putting damage out on something. But rocks just sounded so nice. I'm going to Mew though. Predicting the rapid spin from Blastoise. A little too late. And now I'm pretty much free to set up a nasty plot. Because Dark Pulse is definitely not killing me. With his investments. As he goes out into the Jirachi. And I get a free nasty plot off. Which was fantastic. Nasty plot Mew is ready to go. Is ready to go. He goes for Stealth Rocks. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. I have no removals this week. <coughs> As I go for the Shadow Ball and watch watch my little boy Chew taking out the Jirachi in one hit with a plus two Shadow Ball. That was a high roll. We found out after the match, but it was nice to see. So he goes out into the Talonflame here. I really just want to kill this Talonflame, so I stay in. He goes for the U-turn. Does a hell of a lot of damage, so we find out that his Talonflame is banded. Banded Talonflame. It's not fun. As he goes out into his Gorgeist, I just stayed in though and fired off another Shadow Ball, just wanting to get damage on Talonflame. So, happy little accident there. Gave me the kill on Gorgeist, which was great. The crit didn't matter. The crit wasn't didn't matter at all, but um, yeah. Kill on Jirachi and kill on Gorgas from you, which is pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Back out into Talonflame here, he can just go for a free U-turn. I decide to save Mew as Sack Fodder later on, plus it still has the priority Vacuum Wave, which could help when taking on the Tyrantrum. And Marwile's going to take no damage from U-turn, even if it's banded. After the, int the Intimidate as well. So it gives him some more momentum, but... I wasn't too worried, pretty much. I really wasn't too worried. Um, here he goes out into the Tyrantrum. And this is where, sh where Showdown Calx bent me over the table and banged me. Because when I calced how much damage an Earthquake from Tyrantrum can do to Marwile, it said I could live. It said it done about 86%. But because my Marwile had Intimidate, Showdown automatically put Tyrantrum at minus 1%. So this Tyrantrum obviously wasn't minus one, and Earthquake was a one-hit KO, which lost me Marwile. That was really freaking annoying, because I was thinking in my head, if Marwile can't survive an Earthquake, I'm going to switch out into Staraptor, and just go for a Brave Bird or something, or go for a 
close combat or something. So that was really annoying. But um, Mamma Swine took out the Tyrantrum of Choice Scarf Earthquake. He knows I'm scarfed now. Um, I go out into Mew, sacking it off to the Blastoise because I don't want Mamma Swine staying in. He just goes for Scald because I don't have Vaporeon around anymore to take hits. I didn't need Mew anymore with Tyrantrum down, not really. And now we bring out Alakazam. And this is where I really needed the burn on Blastoise because look how much he lived on. And he gets to break my sash and it was just all round annoying. Because if I still had my sash, I could have taken out either the Talonflame or the Jolteon. And oh, it's just all round super duper annoying. But now... Uh, Talonflame can just come in and clean up with Brave Bird because with Rock's damage, nothing on my team wants to take a choice band in Brave Bird. So yeah, Sam won this match, but my hyper offense play went really well. I kind of just got screwed over by the fact that I didn't get the burn on Blastoise uh, and Showdown Calcs automatically put Tyrantrum at minus one when I was calcing Earthquake damage on Marwile from Tyrantrum. But it was still a super fun match. And um, I'm really glad I got Sam down to 2-0, two, two, uh, two because like I said, he was undefeated. So I think a lot of people expected me to just kind of get destroyed by Sam, which didn't happen. I'm very proud of myself after this. But even Staraptor cannot take a Choice Banded Brave Bird at this point. I really needed that sash on Alakazam. Really needed that sash on Alakazam. So... Staraptor goes down there, and if I still had my Sash on Alakazam, I would have outsped Jolteon, and Brave and Talonflame couldn't have killed me in one hit. But that's what happens, so we lost another match, which puts us at 1 and 5, I think it works out too. And next match, like I said, I didn't play the next match, but we are facing Shardy and the Bayern Munich, who I'm pretty sure were in second at that week. So make sure you tune in for that match. And I will see you all next time. So take care, guys, and bye-bye.